Hey, Dream Drivers, welcome to episode 362 of the Dreams and Drive podcast. Today, we are going to be diving into the announcement that I have for you all. The baby is here. Um, And I'm also going to be talking about the things that I've now accepted as a mom of two. But first, here's a quick word from my sponsor. Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to the colorful world of Skittles. Skittles brings you a jolt of five fruity flavors in every bite, giving you the chance to taste the rainbow like never before. Break free from the ordinary day-to-day with the help of Skittles Chewy Candy. Skittles is a must in my candy jar, movie snack, even my secret to an afternoon pick-me-up. And I don't even care who knows it. Add a splash of joy to your day with Skittles. There's nothing better than fruity fun that tickles your taste buds. Taste the rainbow. All right, all right, all right. So another week of Dreams and Drive, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. Um, If this is your first time listening, make sure you're following us on social. You can find us across the board, Dreams and Drive, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We'd love for you all to hit that follow button and make sure that we're growing our Dreams and Drive community. If you want to be part of our email newsletter, just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash join. That's dreamsanddrive.com slash join in order to just be on that list and get email updates whenever I send them out. So, yes, um, I have decided that, you know, as I announced, as I put in the title of this episode, first of all, the baby is here. So my son Diesel is here. Yes, Axel and Diesel, as you guys know, we are car enthusiasts and it's kind of cool to go with this whole dreams and drive theme. I can talk about their names maybe in another episode, but I want to let you guys know that the baby is here. I have been postpartum for about almost a month now. So just enjoying the new babyness, new baby cuddles, but also trying to find some time for myself, which is why I wanted to dedicate some time to the podcast and also want to be realistic about what the new next few weeks for the show look like so instead of having guest interviews majority of these next few episodes will be solo episodes and we'll be talking about different topics I want to talk about things that are really like relatable to me right now um and other people if you if you guys know I have a unique dream driving journey and I don't want to downplay this part of it because it definitely is important to where I'm going and where I've come from so This is my second rodeo as a mom, had my son in September of 2020. Now I had Diesel in August of 2023. And the differences between the two pregnancies and postpartum definitely are different. One was during COVID where the world was so different. So I'm going to do a specific episode just on his birth story and all the differences later on but just want to let you guys know that yes he is here um i'm doing well everyone in the house is doing well ax was adjusting to being a big brother he loves it which is so really cool to see um so yeah i'm still i feel a lot more confident this time around i think with your second you just don't have as much fears as you did with your first you legit don't know anything about what it is like to raise a child but at least now i'm very confident in the what to do's it's just the how to do things that are a little bit crazy especially having a toddler if any of you have a toddler any of you guys have been around toddlers toddlers have a burst of energy they're very time consuming there's a lot going on with toddlers so to have a newborn to have two under three is a little bit difficult but I definitely know I'm not the first I won't be the last to do it so I've been kind of just figuring out along the way but we'll talk about those details in another episode I kind of wanted to just focus in on this episode is the idea of change and accepting where you are in life, right? So the biggest change right now that I'm experiencing is going from being a mother of one and just kind of having that life figured out and now being a mother of two. And I think that these lessons that I'm going to share, you might hear baby whimpers in the back, these lessons that I'm going to share are going to be things that whether you're a mom or not, whether you're a parent or not, they're kind of things that can kind of be relatable to everyone. So stay tuned. This is going to be a short episode, but I really hope that these nuggets help you just figure out what, um, or how I should say to kind of accept change. And I think that's the big thing, accepting. I think sometimes we fight change. We fight the reality of the situation. Sometimes just letting yourself succumb to the reality, letting yourself just be, letting yourself sit in where you are really allows you to have a lot of movement. And this next series of solo episodes will be about movement, will be about change, will be about progressing, will be about 
just how to kind of do things and how I'm doing things as a mother because a lot of you guys listen are parents. So I just think it's really important for me to speak to my experience and be as real as I can with you guys about everything that I'm experiencing. So let's get into this. Number one, first thing that I've really accepted now being a mother is not every season is my season. And I say that because, and let's, let's switch this to, to what, it, to make it relatable to you all. Not every season will be your season. And here's the catch. That's okay. It's really okay. I had to say that to myself because, you know, you may feel this FOMO, fear of missing out when you're a new mom, whether you're postpartum, whether you're in some part of your life and you're just like, wow, everyone around you, comparison can really be the thief of joy. And for me, it can be hard to just see everyone living and going on life as normal. Where here I am taking care of two kids, just dealing with the whole bodily postpartum changes. There's just a lot that goes on. And just being like, wait, damn, like, why can't I? And I had to really snip that in the bud. Comparison is a thief of my joy, will be the thief of my joy if I allow it to be. So accepting that not every season will be my season, but when my season comes, that will be my season. I will live and I will enjoy it thoroughly. Rest is okay. Being going slow is okay. Um, but not trying to do and be and, and like, I don't have to carry on life as it was before. And I can kind of create a new life, a new idea of what not being in season is. Cause think about it. Fruits, vegetables, not everything comes in season, but you still love them, right? You still love your apples, but you, when do you want your apples? When do you want to eat your apples and really experience the best of your apple is when it's in season, right? And you know, when something's not in season. So it's like, why are you trying to tell us this thing right now when it's not in season? So even for you in your own life, that can be the same. So tell yourself when if you're feeling like, wait, what's going on? Not every season is your season, but you know what? You can still be preparing. And that's going to be the next thing that I've accepted is you can still be preparing in the background. And sometimes that preparation is needed in order to be consistent later on. And why I say that preparation and consistency go in hand is because even though the season is not yours right now, you can still be doing things in the background just to make sure that when it is your season, you'll be ready. You'll be good to go, right? Dream drivers, as you guys know, I have a new baby on the block and I'm back in diaper mode full time. Life as a mom of two can be super chaotic, so I need a diaper brand that's reliable and works just how I need it. That's why I'm a Pamper Swaddlers mama. Fair No Leaks, one of my biggest pet peeves with the new and improved Pamper Swallows. They now feature a blowout barrier at the back waist to help prevent up to 100% of leaks and even blowouts. Plus, the dual leak guard barriers at the legs help protect where those leaks happen the most. And you know, newborn days are poopy central. And if you don't have to deal with a mess or a change in time as a mama, that's gold. I remember being traumatized those first few weeks with baby Axel. So with this new blowout barrier, it's so clutch because it means it's just one less thing I have to worry about. Less mess, less hassle, less stress, which means more smiles, more time enjoying that baby, and more dream driving. P.S. I love that Pampers Swaddlers is hypoallergenic, meaning I never had to worry about diaper rash. With Axel on, his skin was always so healthy, so I'm looking forward to that this time around, too, with the new baby. Go download the Pampers Club app today and earn Pampers cash so you can try and fall in love with Pampers Swaddlers, too. Walgreens knows you need your medications, but sometimes what you really need is a prescription for more time with your family or friends or just more time to do what you want on a Saturday afternoon. That's why Walgreens offers same day RX delivery to where you are. So you can get more than just your meds. You can get your prescription to save time at the pharmacy. And when you have pharmacy questions, which let's face it, we all do. Walgreens will be there for you with a helpful 24 seven pharmacy chat. So when you need to know, which med do I take before bed again? Or is it safe to have a glass of wine with my prescription? You can ask a Walgreens pharmacy expert that question, no matter where you are or what time of day it is. And that gives you more than just answers. It gives you your prescription for peace of mind. Delivery is available on eligible prescriptions only. See details at walgreens.com slash prescription delivery. I'm still reading. I'm still catching up on things behind the scenes. I'm still just trying to think about how can I prepare for myself when I'm ready to go? What are some things that I can get, you know, can get done? And even just working on myself and just 
taking that rest, that is preparation because when it's time to go, I want to make sure that I have that energy. I have that vigor. I have that motivation to be able to do it. And it's even funny because just with things non-Dreams and Drive related, I really had to sit down and think about what are all the things that I can prepare, I can outsource, I can ask for help, which is another big thing I've had to realize. Asking for and accepting the help is is okay too. And that can be help of any kind. Like in the beginning when I was first just had the baby, people came over, gave us meals, sent us gift cards. Um, even just people coming and taking Axel for a few hours. I, I thought it was would be a burden, right? Like, oh, I don't want to have them watch my other kid. And no, take Axel. Let him enjoy it himself because I know that I cannot do everything right now. And just kind of relinquishing that control and letting myself know that like other people can help you and it's okay. And other people are willing to, and the help they can give you may not be how you do things, but guess what? You cannot do it all, Rena. And that is something I think that you and your own life can think about. Are there things that in this season of your life, whether it's your season or not your season, that you can really get help, whether that's building your team, whether that's bringing in people to help you outsourcing, do not deny the help of any kind, because even a little bit of help goes a long way. Um, Here's a deeper thing that I've realized as well. Having children does not have to kill your dreams, but sometimes it sure can feel like it. And I say that because, and why am I saying I've accepted that it's going to feel like children can kill your dreams in the beginning or at some point? is because it's going to be tougher. It's going to require more energy, more work. Like, you know, just getting up and going. So for example, I'll give you an example. This this might make things make sense. So it was New York Fashion Week this past weekend. I was invited to an event last minute. It was okay. I, if this was like normal pre-2020, it would have been all right, right? But I saw this event come in, you know, I got a press pass. It was something I really wanted to go to. There'd be a bunch of like past guests there, I haven't been to New York Fashion Week event in so long. I feel just so honored to get the invite. And then I thought about it. Well, wait, I have two kids. One of them, you know, Axel's older. So that'll be fine to figure out what we do with him for child care. But my baby is still not really taking a bottle. He's being breastfed around the clock on demand. He's still kind of on the younger side. I was telling myself, like, damn, like, maybe I could just bring him and strap him to me. It'd be all right. And, you know, or leave him in the car with his dad and they'll drive around for like an hour and I can still do my thing. And I was just putting all these scenarios in my head. And ultimately I decided that it wasn't going to work. It was best for me to probably just stay home. And I felt really bad. Like, I was like, damn, like, I, why? Like, if I didn't have kids, this wouldn't happen. And for a second, I let myself sit in that I validated my feelings. This sucks. But at the same time, I realized, but you know what? This doesn't mean that you'll never be able to go out again. Or now you know. And if something were to come up, A, you need more time. People can't really just invite you last minute. Or if you do get invited to events last minute, either baby has to be old enough so that you can take him with you. Or here are some criteria. So I kind of use it as a learning experience. But in the moment, it felt really sucky. But as I kind of stepped back, I was like, wait, Raina. You're you're still going to be able to go places. This is just one of many things that you'll be able to do in the future. And so just telling myself that and just being able to admit like this is sucky and know that I'm not alone. There are a lot of working mothers, mothers in general who feel like their life changed and that children kind of can like make it worse in a bit. And I, I want to change that narrative by talking about it because I think it's something, especially for black women who are very ambitious, there's this thing where it's like, will kids be the killer of your dreams? Will kids not allow you to achieve? And I want more women who have children to start speaking out about all the things they are able to do while still having children because I think that narrative is so important I think that narrative helps to normalize motherhood yes it is hard and I can still do it not but yes it is hard 
and I find ways to navigate it. Or maybe making spaces more open to people who have mothers, right? I really think if I went to that event, you know, still looking cute and had my baby wrapped or me, it would have been fine, right? So I think normalizing spaces around motherhood, normalizing the narrative about women who are ambitious, who want to go out, who want to do things, but also still have to bring their children. It's something I'm realizing that it's okay to feel. And just by talking about it just helps open up the connection. So if there's other people listening who feel like this, let me know, like hit me up. Like, what do you do in these situations? And I'm even thinking bigger than this, like vacations. Like there's so many things that children can seem like, you know, you don't want to plan a vacation with your kids because you can't do things. Don't really be a vacation. No, still plan that vacation and figure out how to make it work. Right. Because what's the opposite? Not doing anything. And for some people who don't have childcare, who aren't able to afford a sitter, who, you know, whatever their life circumstance is, like sometimes just bringing the child is the only, is the only option you have. So, I think, you know, when I think about it, having children is probably one of the most natural human things to do, right? We need that act of having children to happen in order to continue civilization. But yet the whole idea of motherhood and parent parenting can kind of be not accepted, which is this paradox that's really hard to grasp sometimes. But yeah, do not feel bad. If you feel like, dang, this sucks because it does suck sometimes, but there's also joy on the other side. I think that's the bigger thing here. There's joy on the other side. It can feel sucky. Sometimes you won't be able to do everything you want, but there's still joy and a lot of things can still be accomplished. Like I think about when I first had my son and have a job, um, I should say like a full-time job. I was able to get a full-time job, able to be a working mother and find that balance. And it's really cool to see how other people are doing it. Of course, we have lots of progress to go in that area, but at least there's progress. And then last thing I've accepted, and I think this is a good way to kind of segue into what I want this like series to be about, is I'm a great mom, which means I'm also a badass at being resilient, multitasking, emotional regulation, loving and caregiving and nurturing, operations, because being a mom requires a lot of things going on in your mind at once and having to be able to execute and do. And like, this is the biggest thing that I think a lot of us moms, caregivers, sometimes get in our head about, like we forget to think about all the skills that make us great at what we do as mothers also make us great out there in the non-mothering world, right? Like I'm a mother everywhere I go because these skills and these this experience that I have translates to every single thing that I do beyond parenting my children. And that's something that I want you to accept or whatever that thing is that you are, right? That thing that, let's say you are an athlete. Let's say you have this special skill, passion. There are skill sets that you have that make you so unique and make you so valuable. And I think that we start accepting these things. It'll really, really help us with our personal branding, with our confidence, with just being able to figure out what our passion, what our purpose is and where we excel at and how to kind of make that really shine during the dream driving journey. So think about that big thing that defines you. But also think about all those minute skills that you're a badass because you are that big thing, right? So for me, I am a great mom. I'm going to say it. I'm going to affirm myself that. And that also means I'm great at so many other things. And this period of my life, again, is going to be transformative. And I'm really excited. I keep telling you guys this. and I'm just kind of being real because it's been slow with Dreams and Drive. Thinking about what comes next has been slow. Thinking about what change looks like. I'm still in that kind of change area, but still trying to be consistent with these episodes, especially because I have sponsors just being real, right? Like you can still change and be on the change. I don't know if that makes sense while things are changing. So I don't necessarily have to be in park because things are in a change mode. Some people think they have to park and some people decide to do that. For me, in my circumstances, I'm kind of in this neutral, but I'm still going. You guys will still get these episodes and you'll be part of the journey. I have some things I'm going to be testing out, so stay tuned. Make sure you're in the email list. Go to dreamsanddrive.com slash join if you're not already. Make sure you're following on social media. And this is the thing I'm going to say, because if you, if you got to this part of the episode, that means you are either really enjoying the content or you're a longtime listener. 
if you ever have any ideas on how you can help me, if you have skills, if you have services that you think would be good for Dreams and Drive, reach out to me. I'm really in this stage of just kind of, and I have the time, right? Thinking about what's next. I want to really just focus in on um, everything. And I want to just focus in on like, the bigger picture, non, like there's no real deadlines with things, but just wanted to see what's out there in order to figure out where I'm going, right? So I kind of feel like I'm at a rest stop and the rest stop is overlooking this great pasture, like this valley. I can see mountains in the horizon. I can see so much going on in the horizon. Now it's my turn to figure out, all right, where do I want to go based on the knowledge, based on who's sitting in that rest stop with me, based on everything that I've learned has gotten me to this point. So hit me up, reach out, send me an email, send me a DM, let me know what works, let me know what doesn't work. I have to do a new round of like listener interviews and listener analytics because you guys have all changed. We've all changed since 2016 when I first launched this show. So I'm definitely in this moment of change and just really happy to be here. And that's probably the biggest thing that I've really accepted now, being a mother of two and this point of my life. So thank you guys for tuning in. As I said, yes, baby diesel is here. Um, and I'm just really excited about what's to come next. So keep dreaming, keep driving, and we will chat again in episode 363. Bye guys.